I want you to go back with me to Matthew chapter 6. We're talking about how to stop anxiety. I hope that you are growing in this word and I pray that you revisit it and I hope that you mean it and believe it. Believe it and mean it and keep it. Because in Matthew chapter 6, Jesus tells us in verse 25, it's for a reason. I don't want you to see what that reason is in verse 24. You can't have two masters. For either you would hate one or love the other. Did you know when that anxiety comes, it's coming to try to divide your allegiance to God. It's trying to divide your heart. It's trying to cut you up. It's trying to rip you apart. It's trying to choke the life of God out of you. And look at verse 24. Or he will hold one to one and despise the other. You can't serve God and your problems or mammon or the false God of trust, which is money. I want you to understand something. He said, for this reason, I say, don't be anxious for your life. Now, look at what you're supposed to not be anxious for. What you shall eat. I'm going to tell you all something. That when you learn that you're in the good land, God brought me back, sitting at the dinner table, that my dad took the time and prayed this long, godly prayer. But then when I go visit my grandmother, she take the time and pray that long, godly prayer. When I go visit my aunt and uncle, they take the time to pray that long, godly prayer. But they were thanking God for what was on the table that came from God for nourishment and health and strength to their being. You don't understand that you just can't just run through and put and, and, and not even organize and prepare and thank God for what you eat. He said, don't be worried about what you eat. You know, we don't you don't always have to have an egg in the morning. Sometimes you might need to eat your leftovers from last night. Give God thanks. I mean, you've got a freezer full of food that's spoiling because you done ate it and said, I don't want that again. Are you listening to me today? I want you to know, look what he said, or what you shall drink. Well, I ain't got, let me tell y'all something. The most healthiest thing that you can drink is water. Water has no, y'all ready for this? side effects. Water has no list of ingredients or harmful chemicals. Are you listening to me today? I've never seen a medical report or any history that said water is bad for you. Now listen to me. There is times of recording, man, we make water. I work in the water industry. And they'll tell you to be the boil water take out some bacteria. But I'm telling you, water, he said, don't even worry about what you should drink. Or for your body. As to what you should put on it. Let me tell you something else. You shouldn't be, listen, sometimes you've been diagnosed with a condition. But why worry about it? Instead, start working to reverse it. Don't give no thought for the body. All right, so what you should put on? I'm going to tell you something. That's a problem. When you, all your money is all in a closet or in some other place. I want to share something with you. He said, where moth eat, where thieves steal and rust corrodes. Look what he said. Or your body, is, he said, as to what you shall put on it is not life more than food. You can't, shouldn't live to eat, people. You shouldn't live to drink. You shouldn't live to go to a party. 
Shouldn't live to go through so many things. Shouldn't live to go out to eat. Shouldn't live for all this. Let me, let me see what he said. And the body more than clothes. I know so many people have gotten to a point, I ain't worried. No, you need clothes. I mean, your clothes tell you when you need to change them. Huh? You can't no longer wash them. Are oh, you listening to me today? I want you to understand some. The importance of giving to God first and delight yourself in the Lord is that you learn that God gives you abundantly all those things. Now listen to what I'm saying. Is that you found out that, that, that you'd be looking to see, I'm, I'm saving here, I'm saving here, I'm keeping here, I'm keeping here, but I'm not uh, stopping giving to God first. Make God your priority. Now look what he said. Look at the birds of the air that they do not sow, nor do they reap, nor gather in barns. And your heavenly Father feeds them. I want to tell you something. That's a promise to you. If the squirrel can get a nut and the bird can get a worm, you will not go hungry. It comes from God. Did you know that God put the right mind in the squirrel? The squirrels are working right now, storing up, burying nuts, <laughs> building their nests for the winter, for lean time. Did you know that God gave you that mind not to spend, not to go in debt, and not to beg and borrow, but to prepare for every season? God gave you that mind. That's the right mind, people. But you'll go like this. Everybody's doing it. Well, them the people you need to stop hanging around. Or you listen to them. Or they need to stop hanging around you. Let's look at this. Matthew 6 and verse number 26. He said, are you not worth more than they? That's why I talk to the animals. The animals talk to me. Because the Heavenly Father communicate with them. I know that there's a promise of that. I've never seen a homeless squirrel. Y'all didn't get that. I've never seen a bird say, I don't have a home. i seen the birds at night when it starts getting dark. They flying, buddy. They're going home. I don't know where their home is, but they're going home. I ain't never seen them out on the street holding a sign. I never seen them worried about if I'm going to get something to put in this belly. But I tell you something about a bird and a squirrel. They know when to stop. They don't need all the burn worms in one day. I ain't never seen a bird storing up worms. Every day he's got to go out and work just like you. Are you listening to me today? Even on rainy days, even on snowy times, he's, they got to get out. They call them snowbirds. Now watch this. Which of you by being anxious, which of you by being torn apart, strangled, and cut to pieces, can add a single cubit to your life? I mean, can expand your life? Let me tell you something. When a doctor comes to me, you know, I'm okay. Because I'm not basing my length of time on a, a life expectancy of man. I base it on the promises of God. God has a set time. God has work for me to do. God has a promise, purpose for me. I want you to understand something. You can sit and worry about the most smallest, dumb thing. But it ain't going to change God's plan. It will not add more time to you. It won't take more time from you. In ministry, I mean, I, I had to put some things in, in top and priority and then back in place. I was thinking about my life. Look at how much I give, God. Look at how much I've done, God. And, you know, Satan wants you to stand up in God and say, this is my reward. You see? Let me tell you something. God rewards me with the greatest promise of all, eternity. I'm going to heaven, people. 
I'm going to live in the presence of God. And you know what I'm going to live in the presence of God without all of this stuff that I'm worried about. You're worried about stuff that you ain't going to even need. You know? But the most important thing, you haven't made reservations for your soul for eternal life. Because when you have a relationship with God and it's real, you're going to delight yourself in the Lord. You're going to find the joy of the Lord. Now, I want to keep on reading because I want you to see this famous scriptures. And look at verse 31. Do not be anxious. How many times did he say that? Three times. Coming from Jesus. That tells me that we need to stop anxiety and worry and doubt and fear. And I'm saying this to you. This isn't a panic attack where you got to go get your blood pressure meter and rush off with 911 because you can't breathe. Amen? This is inside your heart. This is inside your mind. It's your thoughts that's bombarding no matter what. You can't escape it, people. It's inside of you until you stop it. Look what he said. Do not be anxious, saying, what shall we eat? What shall we drink? With what shall we clothe ourselves? He said that again. Are oh, you listening to me today? Let me tell you something. I eat good. There's nothing worse that seeing somebody who don't appreciate good food. Let me tell you what I mean. It's easy to say something, but when you, when God gives me something, I know it comes from God, it's good. It's good. It's good for me. Let me tell you something. I, I rejoice in what God gives me. I try to take my time and realize it's coming from the good land. It comes from the place where God has placed me. It nourishes me. Amen? Praise be the living God. I want you to see this in verse 32. For all these things the people of the world eagerly see. I want you to test yourself. Do you seek God like you seek what you shall eat, what you shall wear, what you shall drink. Do you seek God even more how you appear in the eyes of others? Or you listen to me? You know, it takes a lot of energy to perform for people. That's all it is. But you know what? I find very few people want to perform for God. As I said, we want to give God stinky time, bad breath time, instead of the best time. You know, sometime at your house, you're going to meet God. Won't you dress up like you're going to meet God? Huh? Oh, ain't nobody going to see me. God is seeing you. Hello. I mean, we spend time with God and never ask Him a question. We, 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 I'm telling you, you can't have devotion without God talking to you. And without God wanting you to talk to Him. You need to ask me, you know, how does this relate to me? When I got back, I just sat in my prayer chair. Thank God. You know, I thank God for a wonderful time. Above and beyond what I would ask or think. I want you to know that God is doing well in my life. Even in my children. I want you to know that I ate well at the table not at the restaurant. I want you to know that I had a safe trip, had the best travel, leg, leg room. I gave God thanks for everything. And I thanked Him for even my cab drivers. I didn't have to walk home from the airport. I want you to understand something. That you, I gave thanks to God because He put the right people in the right place at the right time. 
to assist me in the good land. I want you to know that many of you would have just put your shoes off and just jump right in the bed. I had to give God thanks for watching over my place, making sure nothing happened out of the ordinary. Are y'all listening again? I got to give God thanks. Because look what he said in verse 30. He said, yo, eagle see, for your heavenly father knows that you need all these things. Suppose I don't have everything everybody else is running after. But I got a pair of shoes. I got a car. I got money in the bank. Are you listening to me today? I want you to understand, he didn't say that you need, he says your father knows what you need all these things. Sometimes you need to realize you got more than enough. Do you know you got the opportunity to be healed? What you do, wait until the last minute. God gave you wisdom. Are you listening to me? But look at verse 33. But see first his kingdom and his way of doing things, his righteousness and all these things of the added. See, God knows that you need these things, but bottom line, you, he's showing you how to get them. See, in verse, let me tell you, you want to stop anxiety? You need to put God back first in your life. As a pastor, I would have never thought that God he was reminding me I'm first. Here's what he said. Y'all ready for this? In Hebrews chapter 13. And I would have never thought this. I came to God and talked to God about money for church. How church, I'm not going to make it. I mean, people are not giving. People are not have left. People stop. But I come to God. I had a concern. I have a problem. And, and, and I will come to and he pleased me. I'm looking for one scripture that he's a very present help in time of need, but that ain't what I really came for. I come for what God showed me in Hebrews 13. I think it's verse number five. Won't you turn there? Because this is one of the things that got you worried all the time. Hebrews 13 and verse number 5. Now how do I know that? Because when you get free, you're going to always remember. Well, look what it said. Let your character. I'm talking to I come to God and talk to him about God. How are you going to do this? How am I going to make it with it? I don't have the money. I don't have people ain't give. We are well, 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 all these years. And I was looking for help, but God knew what I really needed. Look what he said. He said, son, let your character be free. I had gotten to a point. Everything going well, everybody giving, their bills are paid, I ain't got to worry about anything in a while. I, all I have to do is preach the word. And God provided a good word. But God want more out of me. He want me to be free. And I want you, He wants you to be free from the love of money. Reason why you don't do what you God asked you to do. You love your money, baby. You love your money to the point you won't even pay your bills on time. You will pay yourself. You will pay your whatever, your medicine. You and I'm not talking about the medicine. The drugs, the clothing store is your drug store. <coughs> You make up a lie for a reason why you have to go. It's an addiction. Do you want to stop anxiety? Stop. Get free from the love of money. The reason why you don't give 
regularly and give consistently and give what God has given back to you the way he said because you love your money baby and the reason why I was coming to God and was saying Lord because I was falling into the trap of looking at the bank account instead of looking at the hills from whence my help come the Lord is my helper I want you to see something, people. Before you ask God for help, before he help you, he got to get you free. Because that's what the world seeks. That's what the world wants. Anybody getting anything out of it? I want you to see this today. Look what he said. He himself said. God said. Jesus said, I will never desert you, nor would I forsake you. And let me tell you something. I'm sitting there feeling like I have been forsaken because of people. This would have never happened to you if the crisis, the concern, or the problem never occurred. I'm going to show you how you stop anxiety. You got to stop running from things and you got to rejoice in it. I had to say, I'm, I, I got this, God changed the revival. That was a story from God. It wasn't Pastor Tom's story, it was that God is on time. God knows the future. I want you to understand that God is very near. I never desert you, I never leave you. That's all I need, baby. It looked like nobody's here, but today I felt his anointing. I still feel his presence. I feel the glory of God like I never felt before. Because he'll never leave you nor forsake you. And you're going to have to come to a point that what I'm going through, what has happened and what has occurred was good for me. And when you can give thanks for it, say, God, thank you for opening my eyes that I have began to just to love money. I have begun to count on people. I have begun to count on this. I have begun, and, and Lord, I thank you, Father God. And I want to say something to you. Anxiety travels with you. Huh. Because I, I was in California visiting me every night. In the morning, same time. It, Listen, three hours back uh, behind us with anxiety, it was the same time, three o'clock in the morning. Three o'clock in the Eastern time, three o'clock in the morning, Pacific time. It came, it travels with you. You can go to the club and sit down and think you're looking good and having your drink, but trouble's still with you. You can go to church, shout hallelujah, listen to everybody else sing and raise your hand. But as soon as you leave trouble, you still with you. Because look what he said down in verse number four, six. We covered in the say, I had to come to that place, people. That I couldn't just say this flippantly, but I'm at the place I can confidently say, I want to share this with you right now, I am so happy for everything, I'm so happy for all that's going on, I'm so happy because I'm confidently knowing that God, hallelujah, is near me and with me and God will not forsake me and God will show up and there's a reason for it that's greater than any 30 years before. He brought me to this place. He brought you to this place. You got to understand. You got to stop the 
any anxiety. Jesus said, don't be anxious. That means you can't keep living with it. You can't die with it. You're not going to be risen with it. You can't just die in your troubles and think you're going to raise the glory. You got to get the glory now. He said right now, you got to confidently say, the Lord is my helper. If you got that today, won't you test? God is my helper. You know, I go to other places, man, they got some beautiful churches, beautiful people. I love the people of God, and they got everything. And I'm sitting there going, I wish I had this God. I wish I had that God. I wish I had that God. I wish I had that God. And God told me, and all of a sudden, a young man say a scripture for spiritual warfare that I know that only come from here. But he didn't hear it here. Hear it. He puts it, I put it in the heavenly for others to you. And God said this to me, and God would never say to you if he wasn't near. God was near me. He said, see there, son? He said, that's why when you ask people to come in this church and pray for the offering envelope, the charitable gifts, and pray for the churches, and pray for this church, and pray for God's my will be done. Do you see? You can't come in this church no more and call yourself praying and taking a nap. You shouldn't come in this church dressed any kind of way. You need to come in. You can't come in here dragging. You got to come in here excited. You got to have confidence, 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 confidence like a soldier in the military. You might not have a one bullet in the gun, but the enemy see you with a gun. You see you're not afraid. Confidently. You, it says we confidently. You got to have some confidence in your prayer. You got to have some confidence in your praise. You got to have some confidence in your devotion. You got to have some confidence while you're standing in the marketplace. You got to have some confidence. And you know, I was sharing that with my daughter. We had just finished down. I said, you know, I was thinking, man, this is your church, you got a beautiful church. And you know, I was saying, you know, I was I, I really love and 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 I said, and I was thinking, you know, man, I wish I had it. She said, you don't need all that. You're doing good in what you're doing. God used her. Let me tell you something, people. I'm more concerned about your walk with God. Than even my own. I want to show you how you end anxiety. You got to have confidence that the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. See that anxiety come because I had a little fear how I'm going to make it, how the church going to make it. That means I have to do more. But I'm going to share something with you. The Lord's reminded me, he said, son, you can see that bank account you got. Who put it in there? Not enough say it, people. You see, I can't be a love of money. And, and I want you to understand something. I'm not here trying to prove a point and say, see, I can do it without you. No, I did it without you before you. I did it because of this confidence. A zeal for God. You don't lose your zeal when you're attacked, when you're persecuted. You're going to see this today. Wow, where did time go? I want you to understand that you've got to have confidence. You've got to stand book up. You can't look at your problem and go, wow, I can't, I can't make it. I can't do it. You know, it's going to, so I got to suffer. Guess on what? If pain and whatever is causing me some pain, guess what? It's good pain. Because God is with me. The Lord is very near you. Look what he said. What shall people do to me?
I'm going to show you something that you need. I shared this with you, but you might have missed it during revival. We're in New Year, people. The reason why most of you are having anxiety and you can't seem to get ahead. You never follow your pastor's life. You never follow your pastor's example. You're going to see this again today. Instead, some people in, even join in conversation and talk about the pastor. But you don't know him, their life. In the wee hours, in the moments, it's all during the day that they're calling on God for you to do what you're supposed to do. Look what he said in verse number seven. Remember those who led you. You got to remember every time you come here, every Bible study, every time you hear a word from the Lord. I know you may think you've heard them over and over, but God will draw you to a word so you can remember who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the result. Look at their life. Look at their conduct. If they can do it, you can do it. If they can say, you can say. If they can end it, you can end it. If they can reap the rewards, you should reap the reward. Result of their conduct, what do you say? Imitate their faith. You've never seen me come to church with empty hands. I want you to know that many times I don't give in the benevolence because I've already, I, I have it included in everything I give. I put on my envelope what I give, my tithe and my offering and my benevolence. I don't hold anything from God. And I'm gonna share something with you. It's not because I'm the pastor. Are you listening to me? I want you to know that I still carry my old church tithing envelope in my Bible. Just in case I miss church, I was going to mail it. When I left my former church, my, I, I told my pastor to be my last Sunday, and all the ministers was having to be in the, in the, in the, in the uh, hall. And as I was leaving, he said, see that man there? He's the only one minister that paid his tithes and all. I thought everybody gave because they were always shouting in church. They were always running in church. They were always in the passive face. You need to imitate that kind of thing. You need to imitate somebody that will bind the devil that are cast out spirits, that tell you how to come take the authority over your thoughts. Because look at verse 8. You thought you was just talking about your pastor, but there was something in your pastor that came from heaven. is Jesus. Because look what it says in verse 8. Jesus is the same today, yes, and well. The word you hear in Matthew is the same today. But Jesus was in, is in your pastor. The Jesus is in your leader. If they're truly from God, you'll know in 30 in years you'll see their lives. Turn back to James. One book over. Chapter 1. When you fall in these dire times and tribulations and Worry. When worry comes in the middle of the night, in the day, when you, you listen, you got to call it a problem when it's a problem, people. You can't find joy in your habit. There's nothing that my grandmother, my mother, my aunts could take that could calm their nerves. Only Jesus. Y'all didn't hear what I just said. I want you to know what I'm saying. He, he said, consider it all joy. Delight yourself in the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Look, when you encounter, when you fall into it, 
to various trials. I don't know. I didn't know this trial was going to come, but this trial had to happen. And it happened to you too. That spirit rises up in a quiet way. Keeps you from doing what you're supposed to do. Makes excuses for you to come in excellence and confidence. Are oh, you listening to me today? Luke said, and let, knowing that the test of your faith produces endurance, and let endurance have its what? Perfect result that you may be perfect. The Bible can says that you can be perfect. What was it? Complete. You get over it through, never going to see it anymore. Did you know that I'm never going to return back to the fat guy? Never. The fat guy had me at the Chinese restaurant. The fat guy had me at Bojangles eating biscuits. The fat guy had me eating all those hamburgers and, and white bread. The fat guy had me drinking all that soda and juice. The fat guy is dead. Never to return. Do you know what happened when the fat guy died? My blood pressure is like perfect. My blood sugar is was the lowest ever been, like I never had a condition. You see what happens when you take care of your problem? You don't know the other things that have been solved. You didn't hear what I said. And you sit there getting all frustrated because you know you don't think you had time. When God showed you, it was a concern then. But now you're ignoring it. It's become a problem. You can't move. You can't go forward. The promise will not come because God's word is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Take care of it. If you get anything out of the word, say amen. If you get in pinch, say ouch. I want you to see this is the hundredfold return that God showed me years ago. It's in my books. I call loneliness. It does a perfect work. It completes you. And it what makes you, look at what it says in verse 4, lacking in nothing. No lack. Seek first his kingdom, his righteousness, and all those things will be added to you. But look what he said. You can't do this on your own. You got to ask for wisdom. Don't be afraid of wisdom. When wisdom talk, you think it's worrying you. Wisdom say, stay out of the store. Wisdom say, save your money. Wisdom say, open up another bank account and, and use that. And, and when you ain't got no money yet, you ain't got no money for fun. Wisdom will say, do things. Wisdom will say, you need to do this. And you can watch the progress and the changes. But you got to ask in faith. Because you didn't understand that anxiety was coming. It was coming to test your faith. Let me show something with you. I'm so glad for the test people. Because I got to see God. Because I went through that trial, Jesus shared with me hidden mystery of his coming the first time and gave me the confidence that he's coming again, which I already knew. I'm going to share something with you. I'm going to tell you this right now. 41 years ago, I learned that Jesus was coming. We're closer then than I was now. He's coming, people. Jesus showed me in a vision when I was a little child that he was coming. Why did he do that? Because he's coming. I've seen people run from him. Because he's coming. I want you to know something today, people. I got confidence. I want you to know that, look what he said, let him ask in faith without doubting, for the one who doubts is like the surf of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. Now, the word of seven. For let not that person expect that he will receive anything. That's nothing from the Lord. You can't doubt people. But being a double-minded person, unstable in all his ways. That means you can't be talking like you're in faith and walking like you're not. 
Are you listening to me today? Now I want you to see these keys, these things that you need to know. That these things, when they come, they're just momentary. See, this, this, this momentary look at the natural was a momentary light affliction. But when I turn away and keep my eyes on God, I see the eternal glory. Amen? It may just be what you need that will point you to God's way of working it out. Testing of your faith, the patience, the perfect results, and lacking in nothing. Stop anxiety. Won't you ask God for help and wisdom? To stop anxiety, you got to ask God for help and wisdom. I want you to see again, turn with me to Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. And verse number six. Do you think that Apostle Paul has some worries? Every single time he stepped out there, to, he was being stoned, he was shipwrecked, he was had lack, even the loss of life sitting in prison. Here I am concerned about how long God gonna keep a church open. Paul was in prison every day wondering when they're going to cut his head off. That's how you stop his eye. You worried about what you, 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 your shoes until you meet somebody in a wheelchair that has no feet. You worried about paying the bills for your roof or your head till every day you drive down and see people living in a tent. You so mad because you got to go to work and that you see people holding road signs and says, I, I will work for food. You can stop it, people. It has no value. Worry and anxiety is tearing your apart is for no reason. It has no purpose. It's not going to help you grow. It's not going to get you what you asked for. It's not going to help you believe God, trust God. It's going to make you forsake Him and speak evil of Him. Look what He said. Be anxious for nothing. I just showed you that if you consider it joy and let and and test your faith will produce. No lack in your life. I wore a shirt last Sunday that I have for seven years. And when I'm going to church and my daughter said, Daddy, that's a nice shirt. I'm sitting in church and someone turned around and said, I just want to tell you that's a nice shirt. I want to tell you that as I was walking out, a gentleman came to me and said, I just want to tell you, that's a nice shirt. I want to tell you something. It really wasn't the shirt that they saw. They saw somebody happy in the shirt. I want you to understand something. That, that, that I was, listen, five, seven years old. Because God gave me my things. I'm going to take care of them. I want you to understand, when you find that you got so much, you, you, you're not taking care of the good land. Are oh, you listening to me today? I want you to see here, he said, be anxious for nothing, but in everything. Are y'all ready to learn? I want you to see what you got to do to stop anxiety. Pray. But it's not just any kind of prayer. Look what it said. And supplication. That means you pray a little bit more. You got to get. Look what it said. That's the key, people. Here's the next one. You got to give thanks for it. This is what set me free. This is what showed me that the victory is that 
eyes, when I lift that offering, I give thanks for it no matter what. Just like Jesus gave thanks for the two fish and the five loaves. He didn't look at the dire need of the situation. He didn't look at the people who were hungry and in the middle of nowhere. He saw that God was near. And I had to say, thank you, Lord. I needed this. I need to go through. I needed this. I'm glad for it. I'm so thankful for it. He reminded me, I started here with the zeal and the hunger for God to reach the nation. You gotta thank God for your credit report. If it's bad. You gotta thank God for your body if it's sick. You gotta thank God for your problems. Because until you bring it to God, you can lift it up and give thanks. You haven't prayed. Jesus gave thanks. Are you listening to me today? You got to give thanks for her. Jesus is doing it, baby. I'm out there doing my God work. I lifted up my hands to God. You don't think Jesus had anxiety? You see, when you tell everybody what they want to hear, they like you. But when you stand in the presence of God and say what they don't want to hear, they'll throw you down the cliff. They'll speak evil of you. They'll come up with something to try to hurt you. You can't hurt a dead man or a dead person that died in Christ. I want you to understand something, people. You, got to, you can't have it both ways. You can't have it where everybody loves you and nobody is going to hate you. You can't have it where God performing miracles and people will persecute you, won't persecute you. If you want the miracles, you've got to have the persecution. If you want the God to use you, you've got to have people speak evil of you. It comes both ways, people. If you want to be used by God, you've got to take the responsibility of God will provide. Moses had a tough job, people, bringing people. Two and a half million people across the desert. Did you know that Caleb waited 80, 45 years to get his land? And he said, I'm just as strong as day as it was when the time when Moses promised it to me. Why did he have to wait five years? He said it took them 40 because they had, even God, God promised you the good land, you got to fight your, you got to fight the giants, you got to fight the anxiety, you got to fight the thought, you got to fight the doubt, you got to possess the land. It took them five years, people. And some of y'all can't handle five minutes. You sit there in your Bible. You didn't really pay attention or whatever. That word is coming. You're going to be held accountable. You sitting there saying to light yourself in the Lord. But as soon as you did, the anxiety coming at 3 o'clock in the morning. And you can go to California and it doesn't even worry about the time zone. It comes at 3 o'clock in the morning. But I'm giving thanks. But we said it. Let your request be made known to God. You, you sitting there mumbling, but you ain't told God what you want. You haven't said, God, I want to change. I want to remove the hindrances. I want to remove the illnesses of the affliction. I want this anxiety to stop because if you think the anxiety is giving you comfort. You think it's comfort being broke? You think it's comfort being sick? You think it's common being addicted to some drug? You think it's common being addicted to some bottles of smoke or of vapor? You think it's the addition to be addicted to gossip, to slander? Do you think it's addicted to be a the common to be addicted to laziness? Ain't nobody gonna pick up after you. 
Or you listen to me today. And look what he said. You got to make it known to God. Keep it with God, people. You see, when you, now I'm asking God for fruit, new friends. I want some really godly friends. So that when I can talk to them about God, it won't be competition. But a concern, and they will speak like God, just like my daughter spoke to me. You're fine doing what you're doing. You listen to me today. I've been on the phone with some people to try to talk to them to share something, and they they had to come back with some competition. They were full of hell, people. That's not a friend. I want you to understand this today. He said, and the peace of God was a path of all comprehension. This is how you get it. What happens? The peace of God. Look what it do. It guards your hearts and mind. I'm not talking about a physical condition. I'm talking about a spiritual condition, a heart condition, a mind condition. But this is how you stop anxiety. Give God thanks. And the peace of God will guard you. Look what he does when he guards you. It put a fort around you. I want you to know we say this in Psalm 91 verse 2. He is my fortress. Amen. He is my stronghold. He is him I will trust. God want to, let me tell you, there's an angel here, there's an angel there, there's an angel on the east, the angel on the south, the angel on the west, the angel on the north. It surrounds me, it guards me. When, oh Lord, my God, I love my son. When anxiety comes at 3 o'clock in the morning, I got a buzz saw, I got a chainsaw, I got a noose, I got a hanging man. Ready. I'm going to spread it with the joy of the Lord. You need to say confidently, the Lord is my helper. Whom shall I be a friend? You need to understand you can make the change. You can wear a shirt that's seven years old and God can say, you look good. Are oh, you listening to me? I want you to understand something. Look what he said here. And he said, will guard your heart and mind. You haven't had the guard. You haven't had the divine protection. You got left 2020 and you got filled with anxiety more than you ever have. But God, look what he said. Now I want you to see this again. He says in verse 8, Finally, brother, if whatever is true, honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is good, repute. If there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, look what he said. Let your mind dwell on these things. He said, set your mind on things above. Set your mind on the thing that God is near, that God is in this. I'm going, oh, I'm excited because I want to see a miracle. I want to see God pull me through. I want to see God promote me. I want to see God come into my life. I want to get through this moment Terry Light official. I'm going to see a change. It's going to be for the better. The fat guy is going to die. Never see him again. Just like he told the people of God in Egypt, you will never see any of the diseases of Egypt again. You will come out as slave without bringing you to a land flowing with milk and honey. Anybody got some joy today? Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, and again, Know what I mean? Every time anxiety comes, again, tell it, you can't help my joy. It'll leave people, and you'll be with the peace of God. Now watch this. The, look at verse 9. See, you remember he said you need to imitate the behavior, the conduct, and the faith of those who led you. If you're going to end, hallelujah, if you're going to stop anxiety, look at verse number nine. The things you learned and received and heard and seen where? In me. Paul was a pastor. Practice. I never told you to walk around and not take care of your health. I never told you not to take care of your wealth. 
I never told you not how to raise your family. I had to teach everything. Because God is the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. I want you to see this today. In verse number nine, he said, practice these things. And the God of peace will be in you. The reason why you got anxiety and you can't stop it, you've been coming to church not getting anything. I've been serving God and bringing you everything. If you just practice what the pastor said, the God of peace will be in you. And if the God of peace is in you, he's going to guard your heart and your mind. That's how you stop inside the people. You got to count it all joy. You got to consider this is good for me. It's good that I was broke once. It's good I went through a divorce. It's good that I started the church. It seemed like nobody wanted to come, but look at everything in the church. God brought in the church, the fans, the air conditioning, the chairs cleaning material it's good that I've been on radio to tell people the word of God, I've been on television since 1995, now on YouTube with 230 messages that wasn't there before and going to be many more if it's just when one soul it's good but let me tell you what's more important let it win yours let it win your heart and your mind so you can stay in the things of God. That's the peace of God. If you need to be imitating what you have learned. For my entire minutes, I've witnessed many who, whose problems have grown bigger like mountains instead of being moved by the message spoken and the example of their pastor. Yes, you got to practice and the God of peace will dwell in you. You will find that you will begin to rejoice and give thanks for the circumstances and the situation. And it will enable you to witness God will guard you. And put you, your trust in God. Today, won't you lift your hands to the Lord? Won't you gather your thoughts? Won't you find just one or two things that you had you ignored and say, God, you're in it. You're near me. Father, I thank you for being with your people. I thank you for this healing Sunday, the day the Lord has made, that you show them how to stop anxiety by rejoicing in the Lord, giving thanks for it, because it was good, they needed it, so they can end it. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Give the Lord some praise.